గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు శరత్ చంద్ర ఐఏఎస్ అకాడమీ డైలీ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ అనాలిసిస్ ఫర్ సిక్స్టీన్త్ ఏప్రిల్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ టూ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ రిలేషన్షిప్ బిట్వీన్ సోలోమన్ ఐలాండ్స్ అండ్ చైనా సెకండ్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ డీటెయిల్స్ ఆఫ్ అగ్రికల్చర్ అండ్ క్లైమేట్ అడాప్టేషన్ థర్డ్ టాపిక్ లించింగ్ డిక్లేర్డ్ యాజ్ ఎ ఫెడరల్ హెయిట్ క్రైమ్ ఇన్ యూఎస్ఏ ఫోర్త్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ బెంగాల్ మానిటర్ లిజర్డ్ ఫిఫ్త్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ ద వీహూ డ్యాన్స్ సో కమింగ్ టు ద ఫస్ట్ టాపిక్ రిలేషన్షిప్ బిట్వీన్ సోలోమన్ ఐలాండ్స్ అండ్ ద చైనా సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ సోలోమన్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఈజ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ సౌత్ పెసిఫిక్ ఓషియన్ సో ఇట్ లైజ్ నియర్ పొకాగు న్యూ గియానా అండ్ ఆస్ట్రేలియా సోలోమన్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఇస్ అ గ్రూప్ ఆఫ్ ఐలాండ్స్ సో ఇట్స్ అ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆస్ట్రేలియా అండ్ ఓసియానియా రీజియన్ సో ద క్యాపిటల్ సిటీ ఆఫ్ సోలోమన్ ఐలాండ్ ఈజ్ ఓనియారా so it is surrounded by kiriwati tuvalu fizi like this means a very smaller highland countries so in south pacific region so coming to the uh, present context if we see the solomon islands in south pacific ocean uh, uh, there was a leaked document by which the debates have started that there was a security agreement between china and solomon islands so now we have to observe here that china uh, which is po- uh, following a aggressive policy in south china sea wanted to extend its influence even to the south pacific so it already i mean uh, it wanted to establish its, uh, influence over the north pacific region indian ocean indian ocean uh, pacific ocean north pacific and south pacific as well so if you see this particular news it is all about south pacific ocean where the beijing was, has made a first of its kind means a, a deal which is first of its kind wherein a security unprecedented level of security coordination between china and solomon islands so now this is a worrisome agreement for us and australia why because us and australia for many years were having uh, had a great influence or on these particular smaller countries so if the means now china also wanted to mean china wanted to enter the politics geopolitics of this region south pacific region so if you see what was the agreement between china, uh, china and solomon uh, this is also known as framework agreement between china and solomon islands on security cooperation so it was leaked actually it is said to be leaked so because of uh, the great potential of this particular security agreement in destabilizing the south pacific ocean's politics it became a great debate now see if you observe the wording it says that china can dispatch the police armed police military and other law enforcement and armed forces to the solomon islands when on the request of solomon islands or if this is very uh, not if, even if solomon island does not request also if china believes that the safety of its projects if its mean chinese project chinese infrastructure projects and workers chinese workers in the island or in danger okay so if suppose when solomon island requests china can deploy its military or if china believes that the safety of its projects and workers in the island are in danger I mean chinese projects and chinese workers are in danger then also it can dis- uh, deploy its armed forces so this is a very i mean uh, that's the potential of this particular agreement is very high where china can extend its influence because if you observe the uh, location if you observe the location of this particular island if you observe the location of this particular island solomon island you can see here that it uh, because even though these particular islands are very small the exclusive economic zones for the oceans means around the ocean is very high so around this country okay around this country it will cover a lot much of area as a exclusive economic zone and see if you see the uh, see it is also located between australia and some of the naval arrangements of the us so 
this china when it wants means it is easy for china if solomon islands is in uh, the control of china then it, it, it is easy for china to control uh, to uh, what can we say to di- disturb to disturb the australia as well as us from a very close uh, a close region so if you see chai according to this report china's naval ships so when if at all chinese ships will get the logistics support yeah this is very important so even something of course when not even imagine imagine that there is there was a war there was some i mean imagine that uh, a war has broken then the chinese naval ship will receive all the support from this particular islands not even for war even for aggression or when blockage or whatever the reason and there is also rumors about that china wanted to uh, open a new naval facility uh, in solomon islands already china has a naval facility in diboti or uh, diboti is a country in uh, Aust- uh, sorry africa so african continent uh, near somalia so near somalia diboti is one country so where it had already some naval facility now china want to open the so solomon islands also naval facility in solomon islands also so this is ob- obviously uh, a great warning to both us as well as uh, australia so the deal has been not signed yet but uh, we don't know so when it is going to sign or uh, when solomon islands may sign it and once it is signed then it will be a uh, great setback for both us and australia and uh, for example if we already know we already discussed about quad we already discussed about the quad in the in recent classes that is quad is a group for, uh, of india japan australia and us to control the chinese influence in pacific region indo pacific region particularly so obviously this agreement is setback for uh, uh, the quad group as well so then why why is solomon islands more interested to increase its connections with china if you see the uh, historical background the solomon islands was a part of a uh, uh, british colony it was a british colony uh, but during the time of world war 2 what happened during the time of world war 2 was japan uh, when japanese surrendered to america so when Ger- uh, these solomon islands were again handed over to the uk they were returned to uk so because earlier it was a part of uh, british colony but during the world war 2 as you know that the japanese occupied almost all of these uh, southeast asian countries and islands so they were again given back to the uk as a part of uh, surrender as a part of surrender to usa so when this happened uh, finally when they also got independence in 1978 and became a constitutional monarchy though the thing is even though they became independent even though they are constitutional monarchy even though they are uh, now became uh, completely sovereign uh, now what happened is ethnic conflicts aroused local ethnic conflicts aroused and destabilized the country's politics to some extent so but however with the support of australia and with the support of uk it could however uh, sustain as a country and at the same time it had a very good relations with taiwan we all know that the taiwan is a very small country near the china which says that it is the true china whereas the china claims that it, uh, there is only one china in the world that is uh, like communist china whereas taiwan claim that we are the real china actually they so that was the uh, ideology conflict is there between taiwan and china but however solomon islands used to enjoy a very good relations with taiwan since it got independence and uh, established the uh, established the government but the new governments okay the upcoming new governments uh, they they were they tilted towards the china they tilted towards china why because if you see the beijing's offer of 500 millions in financial aid so means beijing's offer means economic offer or these assistance was huge huge when compared to the china for example if you see it is roughly five times what taiwan has spent on this islands in previous two decades for the two decades taiwan spent approximately 250 millions whereas beijing offer was on offer for one year okay is just uh, is uh, almost five times more than the taiwan offer for two decades so that is how 
so obviously this is why the solomon islands were more attracted towards more tilted towards the china and uh, ready to do such agreements with china and at the same time not only this this is a oh, you may say paul okay the now solomon islands are attracted with this point okay but at the same time there is opposition in solomon islands against china there is opposition why because the chinese firms chinese laborers whatever whoever come from china they are treating the locals inferior okay locals are like uh, locals as inferiors at the same chinese infrastructures must be run by only the chinese so these are the preferential treatment towards the chinese is hurting the sentiments of the locals so that's the reason why there was a uh, protest also protest riots erupted in the capital city honiara okay capital city of solomon honiara there were oppositions to for this chinese projects see at the same the interesting part is they attacked even the chinese assets along with the government property it is basically a, a protest against the solomon government but at the same time they attacked the chinese assets as well so this move uh, clearly uh, says that the solomon islands in the solomon islands there is no complete support for china okay so they want to they want to have good relations with australia us other countries as well so that's the reason why uh, solomon island means we cannot expect complete alienation of solomon islands uh, from uk and us relations australia relations but okay so because of this opposition we can say that point and at the same time what makes uh, chinese interest in solomon islands obviously it is very uh, it is very obvious that china wanted to extend its influence in the total pacific ocean indian ocean and uh, indian ocean and so on that's the reason why it is uh, it is trying to have good relations with some of these island countries okay for example if you see early i mean most of these countries particular island countries were had had good relations with taiwan but now they have they are shifting their relations from taiwan to china so for example if uh, the china has a one china policy one according to one china policy if anyone wants to maintain a relation with china they must discontinue their relations with taiwan so that's the reason why <coughs> so solomon islands and kiribati switched their alliance to china from taiwan okay so they left taiwan and they joined the china so so why because so why what is what is the interest of china so one thing geopolitics as i said you these countries are located exactly uh, in the means between uh, australia australia and uh, us naval bases so strategically geographically it uh, it it gives the advantage for china to locate some naval bases or to give support logistic support to its uh, ships and the second thing these small islands can be these small island governments can be used as a oat bank in uno oat bank in un if they would in favor of china then the power of china will increase in united nations so that is one uh, major reason and at the same time as i said you these are called gained ocean states why those these are called gained ocean states because they have a large maritime exclusive economic zone because from this is a part of large maritime exclusive economic zone is a ground of resources as i said you whether it is fishery resources or it can they can be a uh, international routes okay uh, maritime routes and uh, they a lot of business is, is going on in this particular ex- exclusive economic zones and they can establish some naval base control over the area can be easy if these particular islands are in the control of china so that's the reason why china want to extend its support extend its influence over the solomon islands and at the same time solomon islands have significant amount of timber mineral as i said fishery resources so right so <coughs> between american yeah here we have to observe this australia uk and us agreement so there was a foundation aukus a u k so which says australia united kingdom and united states so this wants to boost the australia's capacity with reference to china through the anglo american cooperation it is very simple this agreement says that australia has to be strengthened to counter the china in south pacific region with the support of uk and us so that's a, that's what that is what main reason of this foundation so 
in order to counter such in order to counter such agreements counter such activities of by us uk australia and uh, in order to infl- in order to gain more economic opportunities in order to gain more influence in united nations and in order to suppress taiwan okay so in order to spread its influence over pacific region so all these are the reasons for the china to go near the solomon islands or to have more connections with the solomon islands but obviously anti china tone is also there in uh, solomon islands but uh, that's we have to so making this making this particular anti china tone now it is very simple now what is the move by other countries uh, so after this particular leakage after this particular agreement whether it is whether, whether it comes or not that depends later but the the trials by china to move closer towards the pacific countries is real whether this agreement is real or not that is a secondary but the but the chinese china want to in, uh, increase its influence in this particular region is real now what is the option left for other countries whether it is uk france or whoever which are in, which enjoy the influence in this particular region pacific islands region earlier were under the control of the western countries both uk us australia new zealand all these countries france used to enjoy good amount of influence in the in these uh, countries so they also used them for the other like uh, ex- uh, testing of the nuclear weapons and all so these uh, are heavily dependent on particular uh, these countries so now chinese influence or china coming together towards these reg- uh, these particular countries is uh, creating disturbances in australia new, new zealand or whatever the countries who are interested in this particular region so the option left for these countries is earlier they may had means they may had complete influence but with the entrance of china this influence of australia or uk us will reduce definitely so that's the reason why they have to increase the relations by uh, like extension of australia's current security deployment okay and us is also considering to re- reopen its embassy in uh, solomon and new zealand also spoken about the chinese militarization that means these countries they have to take immediate steps in order to either pacify the pacific pacific countries yeah pacify the pacific countries or uh, to provide whatever the assistance or whatever the things in order to stop them stop the chinese influence or in order to pro- prevent them going into complete clutches of china so result of this china uh, economic intrusions and harmful impact these uh, on these weak economic and political system significant unhappiness is grown among this uh, island states so that's the reason why honiara uh, you know riots in honiara has erupted as anti china sentiment so it is very simple that whatever these countries smaller countries they must have uh, they must be they must not go into the clutches of china so because these bigger can generally the major powers will use these minor countries as their uh, weapons or toys in this games in their war games or whatever so finally it can be said that the geopolitics of this particular region is undergoing a great change as a result of increased movements in indo pacific we all know so right so the great power rivalry 
sometimes create some opportunities for these smaller countries and sometimes uh, create a what you, when you say a geopartisan situation for these uh, smaller countries right so this is all about the first topic that is relationship between solomon islands and china and now we are going to start the second topic details of agriculture and climate adaptation okay so if you see the context for this particular news is ipcc has released its sixth assessment report ar6 on climate change and it is warning it is giving almost warning to reduce the adaptation gap and build resilience to unfamiliar condition so if you see this ipcc is nothing but intergovernmental panel on climate change so ipcc is nothing but intergovernmental panel so inter government panel on climate change so inter government panel on climate change it re re released the sixth assessment report on climate change so it was giving almost a dire warning about the adaptation gap so what is meant by adaptation gap and unfamiliar conditions so if we have if we have to see this so if you see the adaptation gap means for example when there is a climate change when there is climate change so the vegetation the vegetation has to the vegetation will adapt to the climate change okay the ve ve vegetation whatever the crops or trees or whatever they have they will adapt to the climate change so this adaptation process will be generally slow okay the for the climate change change uh, the adaptation process is very slow but during the process so during the process of adaptation generally the production will decrease the production will decrease so if you see the paddy paddy for example if you see the paddy cultivation the production will decrease during the process of adaptation because the climate change climate change is uh, to be frank if you see climate change is faster than the adaptation okay this itself so this is this itself clearly says what is meant by adaptation gap so the adaptation gap is nothing but the target of the society is the target of difference between the target of the society and real adoption the target of the society is means what society wants is all the vegetation everyone all the vegetation or whether it is everything uh, all the biodiversity in the world or the vegetation they have to adapt towards the climate change when the climate has changed immediately means immediately means that's the target of society for example the society wants uh, within one year uh, within one year all the climate change have, all the vegetation has to be adapted with the climate change but the, that doesn't happen in the real world that doesn't happen in the real world the real adaptation will takes more number of years some 30 years maybe 40 years sometimes 100 100 years also the real adaptation may take more years so this particular gap between the target of the society and the real adaptation is a called adaptation gap so we have so the need of the day is to reduce the adaptation gap that means e this can be done in two ways either slow the process of climate change or increase the process of adaptation by our tree, by our uh, vegetation so increase the phase increase the phase of adaptation or slow the process of climate change so both these processes come under the reduction of adaptation gap and build resilience resilience means resistance okay, to unfamiliar conditions so when there are unfamiliar conditions that means untimely rains or unti uh, unfamiliar weather conditions untimely rains uh, more uh, insulation more insulation or less insulation okay less less amount of rains or more amount of rains floods so all these are unfamiliar conditions now so this particular report is warning the uh, india in particular or other countries as well 
about this adaptation gap and unfamiliar conditions so if you see the indian agriculture and its response towards the climate change already the effects have been started already the effects have been started for example the crop output and productivity is getting decreased local food shortages are coming up climate change is uh, food supply and pricing are getting influenced by this and hunger problem is also getting increased because of this climate change so particularly when the small holder agriculture so small holder agriculture because we know that in india there is a problem of small land holding okay very small land even though if suppose a family holds 5 acres of land imagine a 5 acres of land uh, but in most cases this 5 acres land is spread in different different areas maybe five areas one acre each ideally if you take five areas one acre each so that is how the small holder agriculture is very intensive in india so the problem is very intense so around 86% of indian agriculture is uh, small uh, small holder agriculture only so that's why the problem is there for their subsistence right so so we must search for a solution now it is a time to search for a solution and that particular solution has to balance both demand and here we have pre demand for food on one side protection of natural resources and ecosystem on other side if you keep on producing enough food at the cost of natural resources and ecosystem one day we cannot produce any more food for the upcoming generations so here comes the question of sustainable development so sustainable development is developing today's world not at the cost of the future generation future generations so we have to develop but we should not destroy our environment where our future generations will suffer so that is what the sustainable development so this particular report is warning us about the sustainable development as uh, as well so we have to be more careful and if you see this particular point is important so here uh, we are uh, trying to give some solutions to some extent means how to tackle this particular problem so first of all agriculture requires more development plans so where the soil water management crop diversification crop system optimization sharing of the risk risk transfer so all these are part of the solutions to minimize the climate change as well as to increase the adaptation of this crops so and at the same time the policies are targeting the marginal land owners and this is very important state action why state action because agriculture is basically a state subject it is a state subject and state responsibility under the constitution so so that's why state action say state action plan on climate change is very important and coming to the other solutions like so this has to be the climate change is also a type of disaster so climate change increases the disasters floods or droughts or whatever so here the administration the district administration or the state administration must have adaptation measures must contain the adaptation measures so as far as possible whenever a natural disaster occurs they must ready to they must get ready to face the repercussions and they must get ready to minimize the losses whatever so and all the infrastructure of the must be developed in order to improve the agriculture whether it is value chain or water supply or physical connectivity or whatever so they must I means all it has to be developed as soon as possible and financial adaptation needs climate change climate sensitive industries climate sensitive industries are there like agriculture forestry fisheries so climate sensitive in the sense when climate changes these particular industries will affect first okay so <coughs> so here is some estimation where uh, the requirement will be 206 dollars billion dollars 206 billion dollars in order to sustain ourselves to and to also adapt the for this uh, what is it, adaptation to sustain ourselves during the time of climate change right so such is the risk so here by which we can say that the climate change the warning given by ipcc is real and we must react 
for this warning and as uh, and government has to adopt all the measures in order to reduce the adaptation gap and also to increase the resilience on uh, the unfamiliar conditions so okay so that is all about the second topic and coming to the third topic lynching which declared as a federal hate crime in usa so taking this context so the biden in us the president joe biden of us signed a measure making the lynching as a hate crime right it was proposed very uh, in 1955 actually so first time it was proposed in 1955 but uh, it got into action today so almost a century almost a century uh, passed passed so this uh, bill now the news uh, means we have to look into the indian context because lynching is also there in india in lynching it was also because here we can see so many examples which happened in very recently 2021 in assam a student was lynched at singhu border where the farmers were protesting there also a lynching happened and uh, some bangal salesman in 2021 so at the same time gurugram in gurugram also there was a lynching but this is very recent we have we had a more recent news that is in december 2021 a man who was uh, attempting to disrespect the sacred book gurugranth so gurugranth sahib sacred book they uh, in the very premises in the very premises of golden temple in amritsar the lynching happened okay so what is all about lynching and what does it mean so and what are the what is losses what does losses and what are the uh, ipc say about this lynching so that we will see all the details about the lynching so whenever you are asked any question about the lynching so you must be ready with an answer so i will try to we are trying to help you uh, to frame an answer in this in this particular regard if you see so particularly the lynching is nothing but a mob lynching will happen generally so a group of people uh, come together so and they will particularly uh, kill or attack any single person or any uh, small minor group then we call it as lynching so the causes of lynching may be some religion race caste place of birth gender language dietary customs sexual orientation political affiliation from one party to other party ethnicity yes this happens in like uh, so different ethnic groups so mob lynching is used to describe the acts of targeted violence by large group of uh, people so here particularly mob lynching is a targeted violence particularly they will target any other group or any other person uh, and they will lynch so this is uh, we can say it is a so they will think actually they will assume that other person did some wrong okay punishing the victim for doing something wrong not necessarily illegal okay it may not be see law it is not a crime the not lynching if there is a person called x this x is doing something okay some activity which this activity is not illegal it might not be illegal but still <coughs> but still because of intolerances or because of biases whether it is religious bias or caste bias class bias or ethnic biases or like uh, for example cow vigilance is there uh, or uh, like uh, so such things because of such biases people or a mob a group of mob a large mob will assume that the activity done by x is illegal or uh, not correct and they will lynch mr x so this particular activity done by x may be legal may not be illegal but this group which takes the law into their hand and lynching this particular person is not supportable so <clears throat> why what is the reason why lynching happens uh, frequently or why lynch see if you see 2021 itself uh, almost 5 uh, to 6 examples are there in india so the why the problem here is 
the in mob lynching in mob lynching targeting a particular accused is very difficult okay targeting accused and arresting one particular person is very difficult or arresting the total group is also very difficult so mob lynching means uh, we can say that inefficient working of justice uh, so that's the reason why people are taking law into their hand and they are not fearing of the consequences as the recognition recognizing the particular accused or recognizing the criminal is very difficult in case of mob lynching because the criminals are not one or not two but it is more than 100 more than 1000 sometimes so that's the reason why it is not so easy to recognize and that's so sometimes hate uh, hate speeches hate speeches also leads to the mob lynching so what are the types of mob lynching if you see they are communal based or their religion communal based or their uh, even witchcraft witchcraft is also there so witchcraft i think this honor killing and bovine related like uh, uh, bovine related like uh, anti so they want to sometimes cow vigilance cow vigilance are there so they want to protect the cow that's why some lynching is related to bovine related or uh, suspicion of child lifting theft cases so there are several cases where the generally lynching happens so if you see under the present uh, situations uh, there is no independent definition no independent definition of lynching and that's why section 300 and 302 of of ipc are used to prosecute the lynch so because they are considering lynching as murder so they are um, lynching as murder so they are equating the lynching and murder and they are in going for section 302 of ipc but if you see the dear if you see article 21 right to life so 14 15 so right to equality and prohibition of discrimination so th- all these particular article all these are violated here so if you see article 21 right to life right to equality prohibition of discrimination of under article 15 all these are violated so however it is nowhere mentioned in the law of land and nc simply put as murder why because it is not nowhere mentioned as it is not mentioned in ipc as a special crime it is simply put in the section 302 is applied on this particular case so the need of the day is government i mean law has to recognize this particular crime distinctly from murder so here we have to thank supreme court because in 2017 there was a case okay in 2017 there was a case uh, which is called like uh, tahsin tahsin punawala so it is famously known as punawala case punawala case of 2017 where supreme court gave some guidelines so several preventive guidelines in order to reduce the lynching mob lynching so what it was saying is there should be a distinct offense for lynching so ipc has to recognize it as a separate crime and maximum punishment has to be given and state governments also must appoint the senior police officers in order to uh, preventive take preventive measures against the mob violence and lynching so state government must also identify the places where the lynchings are more frequent and take steps accordingly and there must be a cooperation between districts and also departments in order to combat in order to fight the lynching process so everyone must have the means all the police officers must take the responsibility of for the causing of this uh, historic violence and they must be take care in order to avoid such things and at the same time the repercussions i means if you like, uh, like uh, arresting the accused or punishing the accused punishing the criminals must be given great uh, publicity in the sense they must be broadcast the information about the repercussions terrible repercussions what happens if someone does mob lynching what were the punishments given to the people who participated in the mob lynching so that was that may act as a deterrence in the society all these uh, punishments will act as a deterrence in the society so expecting the deterrence 
government must take steps to broadcast the terrible repercussions so so these are um, the regardless of uh, procedures so if the lynching occurs immediately fir has to be filed and uh, provisions of uh, 357a state government must develop the victim compensation plan so this is also very important ki victim compensation if the victim is there which who undergo uh, underwent the lynching process so his family or himself sometimes he may alive he may be alive he, his family or himself must get enough compensation so this is all these are the recommendations given by the supreme court so fast it wants some fast track courts it wanted some special task force it wanted the specific victim compensation scheme and uh, so it directed the state governments or it directed the governments to make necessary laws if you see only the three countries uh, sorry three states uh, manipur west bengal and rajasthan have enacted the uh, laws against the mob lynching so a specified legislation has to be there to deal the honor crimes hate crimes witch hunting so honor killings honor killings is nothing but if suppose uh take an example where where an high caste okay where a high caste girl or where a high caste boy marries a low caste so uh, these high caste people in order to save their honor they will kill this particular couple so that comes under honor killing hate crimes is uh, the particularly political leaders or any other local leaders will uh, will give a speech which uh, which is responsible to increase the hatred to mo- among other caste other, other religious other region people so that were eight crimes which which hunting which who is which means the per, persons who are performing the black magic and all so saying that some particular person is performing the black magic and res- and responsible for some bad in the village or some bad in the particular area they will uh, they will kill that particular person so to do so by the mob lynch so these are uh, so as far as possible there must be a special legislation to deal such issues so all these crimes are regarded as just murders in in ipc or crpc so but uh, it has it must be properly addressed so only as i said only three states west bengal rajasthan and manipur uh, have the laws against the mob lynching so jharkhand is also introducing the bill recently it introduced a bill now what shall be done way forward uh, to avoid this particular mob lynching if you see uh, so first of all we being a democratic society and being a matured nation so we must completely discourage the concept of mob lynching so there are unsettlement derailment of uh, governance if you see pathological subversion of these principles Uh, government must be stringent there must be stringent stringent intro- intervention by the police and political leadership very important this point political leadership also has a role to play in questioning the social consent and uh, that allows the mob violence because mostly the hate speeches were given by the polit- political leaders to some extent <coughs> so next uh, so this is all about the lynching and uh, the status of lynching in india next coming to the bengal monitor lizard so the context is four person were arrested in maharashtra sahyadri tiger reserve for allegedly raping a bengal monitor lizard so this is the interesting news interesting news why because this particular lizard okay this mo- bengal monitor lizard is a large lizard that is mainly terrestrial or carnivorous and non poisonous lizard so this particular lizard is found in uh, many countries not only in india southeast asia indian subcontinent from southeast asia or east asia almost from iran almost from iran we find this up to java java indonesia so all these are from the vast extent is there for this particular uh, monitor uh, monitor lizard and uh, they will uh, prey on arthropods and sometimes some vertebrates and ground birds eggs fish so they feed on these particular uh, things 
although this uh, bengal monitor does not have any specific predators but mostly hunting is uh, hunting hunting creates a great danger for this particular species so if you see uh, we find them in iran afghanistan india nepal sri lanka bangladesh myanmar so they are usually found on the ground but ke, they can also climb so this particular uh, they can also climb the trees and they can also swim in the water so they are carnivores and scavengers they uh, consist uh, so they as i said they live on vertebrates ground birds eggs fish and all so they have very few predators the major predator is man itself so these are different types bis cobra goira gushab go so in bangladesh and bengal go in punjab bihar gorpur in maharashtra talagoya in sri lanka all these are the names given to this particular lizard now the problem and the context of the discussion is context of the discussion is it is a case of uh, this is a interesting case where persons are arrested for raping a monitor lizard that is these monitor lizards are hunting the monitor lizard is a different thing they are hunted for skin meat and other body parts because the fat of these bengal uh, monitors are used in the traditional medicine okay they are used in the traditional medicine and also the bengal the skin is also used uh, to in manufacturing of the kanzira also known as so it is a instrument percussion instrument is there so in manufacturing of this particular instrument so the skin is used and also the fat of this particular monitors are used in traditional medicines in bengal so if you see the iucn status of this particular uh, lizard it is least concern so if you see iucn status it is least concern and if you see the cites so it is placed in appendix 1 and if you see our wildlife protection act of 1972 this is placed on the schedule 1 so it is okay so coming to, if you see this observation this uh, particular there is no com- these are not engin- endangered species so there is no much population record is also not required for this uh, particular uh, lizard but <coughs> the problem is if you see it is a case of intercourse between a man and man and an animal in the past also if you see the aids okay aids so such diseases like dangerous diseases like aids this came and this entered into the human world human body through an intercourse of man and animal so here also this particular a person was uh, raping this particular uh, bengal monitor lizard so this may give rise to the unethical unethical practices uh, like uh, the person who are psychopaths will do such things so these unethical activities these unnatural intercourses will result in dangerous diseases like aids okay so that is the reason why we we must completely take care and law has to be specifically mentioned uh, and punish these particular crimes because uh, they may be they may keep the total mankind in geopardy geopardy so and the final news is about the bihu dance so if you see the bihu festival bihu festival as a part of bihu festival assamis northeast and assamis and some other northeast states will do the assamis dance that is bihu dance so it is a fast paced dance so bihu festival is nothing but the new year festival in northeast region so they include mag bihu bohag bihu or rongoli bihu or kongali bihu bogali bihu rongali bihu kongali bihu so so in april may october they will do this uh, in january so it it is nothing but the assamis new year bihu is nothing but assamis new year in this context we have to see the new year festivals which are celebrated in india so the new year fest- festivals are there in india so for example if you see uh, we can see ugadi festival 
ఉగాది ఫెస్టివల్ ఈజ్ దేన్ ఇన్ కర్ణాటక తెలంగాణ ఏపీ అండ్ ఆల్సో వైశాఖి ఫెస్టివల్ ఈజ్ దేర్ వైశాఖి ఫెస్టివల్ ఇన్ పంజాబ్ అండ్ ఆల్సో ద పొహేలా బోయిసా సో పొహేలా బోయిసా Pohela Boisak is in West Bengal and if you see Gudi, Gudi Pauda, Gudi Pauda festival in Maharashtra, okay, in Maharashtra, Gudi Pauda and Jude Sheetal, Jude Sheetal festival in Bihar and Jharkhand. and vishu vishu festival in kerala okay so these festivals are nothing but new year festivals marking the starting of a new year in different parts of the country so bihu festival is in north east ugadi festival in karnataka tamil uh, telangana and ap Baisakhi festival in Punjab, Pohela Baisak festival in West Bengal, Gudi Padwa in Maharashtra, Jude Chital in Bihar and Jharkhand, Vishu festival in Kerala, all these are the markings of New Year festivals in India. Okay? Right. So with this, uh, we are ending the current affairs discussion for today. Thank you.